These have no glue on them. They were undoubtedly tighter when they were new. Here's the bolts we cut. Screws. We'll get those out later. This is a little messy. We'll clean that up. Here's a little shim that was on the pin block. These will go in a box. Tag's still in perfect shape. We're going to really try to protect that. There's another bolt that I cut. Need space right there. Hmm. Okay. Now we're going to measure the height of all of these. Make sure they go back. Possibly number them if they don't already have numbers. There's a lot of them on this piano. Unusual to have this many. We're going to clean this all up and then come back. Okay, here's the side piece. I'm going to glue this together now so it doesn't get all beat up. It fits perfectly. Nice thick hide glue. Maybe a little too thick, but it'll work fine. That's good. Okay, here's the soundboard. We just cleaned it all off. Look at this beautiful wood. It was never cleaned. You could never get at it. This is the wood that most rebuilders cut out and replace with new. And we're going to save it. Okay, here is next thing to come out this remaining rosewood molding it's glued on that pine block and on the wall so it's a little tougher to take off this one just popped off this one is a little more stubborn but we'll get it Hopefully this pin block pulls back and it's not bolted to the plate in here somewhere. <clears throat> I think it will. Well, I've never seen a plate out of a piano with the pin block still on it. Oh, here we go, baby. Oh, this is very good. Hopefully it's not screwed in there. It seems... Give it a whack with the mallet though. No. Uh, Nothing attached down here. No. Ah uh, well. It's not moving. Darn. There's something the caught on those those uh Oh no, those darn plates. Uh, I bet you there's a screw in the end of those uh, in the me end of those metal uh, things. Yep. Okay. Okay. Here's this board I cut out. This will be smoothed smoothed out later. And the important part is to put this back. It fits so well, it almost doesn't need a clamp. Nice break.
off and let that dry. We have decided to remove this rosewood veneer on top here so we can get at what seems to be mahogany planks underneath it, unglue those, and then we should be able to unscrew these three. We'll come back once we've made some progress. Okay, we took a little detergent and we'll clean this area off here. Here's the 13. Here is the 14. And here is the 15. And the 16. I like the way they write their letters too. The numbers on there is very nice. And this section here, number 2, we've got the 16 that starts over here. It goes all the way over here to the 17. And the 17 wire goes all this distance, all the way over here, all the way over here, and to the 18, which is right there. That's the 18 wire. That's a lot of notes. And then we have the 19, we have the 20, 21. 22. Here is the pin block unglued. It looks really bad right now. This will clean up. Nice rosewood. Saved it. It's in pretty darn good shape. And under here we have mahogany planks. These are about almost an inch and a half thick. So if we could take this one off, that would allow us to remove this whole thing. There's some, some sort of attachments under these. We might go after this seam. And pop off this whole front part. Save the rosewood that's on it. We'll see what we can do. It's a 19. Scale 19. There it is right there. And we're going to take the A graphs out of this for that 33B. It looks like they'll fit perfect. I hope. All right, there's some desperate measures here. Uh, resorted to wedging in here, trying to get this piece off. This is a really thick piece of mahogany. Luckily, it's mahogany because it does split easy. Oh, I know it's a little shocking, but we can put all this back together. And uh, if we had cut it, we would have been missing those parts. We would have had some trouble. So I just started to wedge it, and it popped off the whole length. But this is a good thing. Now maybe I should be careful with these slivers in here. I don't want to cause any more damage, but see it's stuck still. So we're going to go easy with this. However, there's the problem. These screws. They should have put these here. <laughs> well anyways, they didn't. I put them under there. All of rotate the, the torque on this pin block is a rotational one. You can see some places right here where the wood was actually crushed from the force of the wood and all these tuning pins pushing on this crushing there. Is this anyways, we'll be able to get the plate off now and then deal with this separately. So when we put this back together. This will go, actually go on here very nice. Yeah, looks like it unglued from here. There was a space here. You can hear it. And this pin block is all has separations down inside. You can hear them. It's hollow. Solid, hollow. So anyways, this uh, will proceed. 
this is certainly was the problem we couldn't get the pin block out they made the wood went right around this and uh, my gosh well we, we got it off but they had this strange color underneath the gold and like uh, observing before it seems as if though this color was put on bef before the plate was put in but but the screws are painted see it's got the funky primer on it so that means the screw was put in yeah, or either that or this was put in the piano and they, they painted this funky bottom color then the gold does not extend into it under the pin block was right up to here so that means they put this on after that that's what we're we're discovering they seem to have put the gold on after the plate was in that's very bizarre see here's that undercut undercoat color under the knob and the gold color the bronzing is only painted on top that's it oh uh, I wonder if the agraphs were in when they did that I don't know we'll uh, we'll look we'll clean this all out here observe this just a quick observation these three feet here this screw goes in this one it's slightly smaller the head is flush with that now and this screws a little bigger now it's flush it's odd and there's two different sizes okay now the camera focuses you need to measure the height of each of these and put them all back in the same spot looks like all these long ones are the same type of bolt they're not all different some of the short ones are different 20 like 22 it's gonna take a long time to measure these they might be numbered already if they're not I plan to stamp them little letters so they go right back to where they are so we'll come back once that's done or maybe halfway through this is the only egg raft they give me a hard time all the way from the start and it's just now starting to turn easy and it still is they must have put it in with some kind of gunk or they cross threaded it or it isn't quite the right thread anyways none of our agraph remover tools fit it because it was unusually wide here mongrel <coughs> mongrel uh, agraph Here it comes. My gosh, I wonder if it went through. Well, it was better than nothing, I guess, up in wherever this was in Colorado for a hundred years, they said. So it's a, well, at least it got the note to play. Boy, that's a clunky agraph. Look at how thick it is. I wonder where they got that. Man, I've never seen one that thick. But anyways, all these other ones come out easy. I put the put a wrench on here, and they just seem to let go. I did a test to see if they would come out. Quite a few of them here I did, and they all turn easy. So that's a good sign. Point seven, you say? Point seven. Anyways, uh. This is our little chart here, our notes, so as we can uh, set the plate uh, support uh, bolts at the right height. There's a lot of them. You got another one? We got them all? Yeah. This is how we do it. 88. In case we forget. 85.7. Oh yeah, so this is over here. I'm the assistant today, and he's over there measuring them from the shank. Right there, the flange to the top of that ruler. 
we go. We now can take them out. There's a lot of them. Okay, there's the first one we take out. There's no number on it, huh? No, they come out easy. I wonder That's if they're nice. all the same. You can see where they were held in a lathe on each end. Still got the lathe mark. Huh. Oh, yeah. So we have our little number of letters here because there's more than 10. Tiny little A. It'll go right there. And we'll mark that so this will go right back. Yep, we mark it over here. The letter. Letter indexing. This, this all takes time. Alright, taking these taking these out and trying to use a wrench. And you can't use a wrench on these because they're all different sizes. These were seems like they were hand filed flat. You can see the mark. So this is a different size on every one, so we have to use a little adjustable, no problem. It's just another little thing. Luckily they're very loose. Sometimes they're very tight. In one of the earlier videos of uh, when this was still in the piano and we couldn't see this, if you look in the holes you can actually see this separation here. This is uh, pretty bad. Look at the cap is almost off all the way down, all the way, all the way over here. And over here too. It's loose. Oops, that. Sometimes it's due to the fit that goes here. Oh, this piece of wood bucks up against a cast iron here. And I can see that it wasn't touching everywhere. It doesn't look like it was touching here at all. Nor here. And maybe used a little plaster here. To fill in. Anyways, there's so much pressure on these tuning pins pushing this way against this cast iron plate that you get a rotational force. The tuning pins want to pull this down. Tremendous force. And as a result, the wood crushes here. You can actually see it. Right there. The edge is squished. Right here. This whole thing wants to move this way. Oh well. After 140 years, I guess. This let go a long, long time ago. This has been like this for a long time. And with tapered tuning pins, they probably could get away with it for a long time. Well, there we have it. This is one big piece. Oh, look, there's a number here. Let me see that. 316. Nice light, huh? Light bulb. And outdoors. Anyways, so uh, this is what we're going to do. After giving it some thought and thinking a lot, we don't want to lose this front piece here. See this? And if we can keep that, we can put the top piece back on perfectly. But what we must do is remove this, uh, this cherry looks like cherry wood layer hmm looks to be about seven millimeters thick same thickness throughout though which is good so what we're going to do is we're going to unloosen this board here there's a seam here and we're going to go this way this is already loose okay so uh we saved the top part now we're after this here, this pin block area. We're gonna try to, uh, we're gonna try to extricate, unglue all this stuff, and save this, the base. That would save a lot of time. You don't have to make that. Okay, hold on to your hats, folks. Here we go. Coffee stain. 
Yeah. Turn it in this one. I'm going to try to clean this decal up so we can take a nice picture of it. Crud on there. Some nice little designs in here, huh? This crud probably just won't come off. It's, I think it's in the wood. It's soaked in. The coffee stains would do this. Oh, came off a little bit. Dirt. Let's try it. It's soaking for a second here. Something's coming off. Look. Keep that wet for a minute. That's a little pumice stone. Whoops. Well, 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 well. Oh, look at that. Huh? Oh, that's very promising. Very gentle. Let's go over it here. Look if we can remove the crud almost a hundred percent. That's very nice. No need to get it perfect, just that was a good experiment. Kind of there's another blob here, see if we can get rid of that one. Give it a little moisture. And then we'll try to uh, put a little scrubbing powder, abrasive powder. Finger. Oh, this is pretty scary. But look at what's happening. Get this blob out of here. Oh, look at that disappeared it did not soak in the wood like I thought in fact my little filigrees in the back are getting to be more visible and that's what we want now I have had success of taking a good photograph of these I mean a good photograph and reproducing it on some ex very good paper I've actually glued the paper photograph of the decal in here and nobody knew it was a replacement because the grain lined up in the photograph it fooled them good oh here's some more crud over here let's take a look at this here wow well, right there really this is really uh, exciting because I didn't think we were going to get this good a result Oh, those are beautiful letters. There's more crud here. Okay, over here. Get this crud out of here. You can see in the light where they went over this with a varnish and a paintbrush quickly or something at one time. We're going to lose something here. And that's crud, I think. That's just, that's just crud on there. Let's see if we can get this off. A little crud, we don't want that to be mistaken for the decal. There we go. Stay away from it. We'll stay on the outside over here, over here, over here, because we got to get the the surroundings that got to be in the picture too. There we go. Clean this crud. Clean this crud. Uh, if I have to, I'll bring the soundboard to the photographer in his studio. But what I'm going to do is try to get him to come here. There, we've done it. A little bit over here we don't want to get too fussy because we could damage it in my excitement here there we go look at that I'll get that crud oh geez whatever that is this water is soluble too it's luckily this right here easy does it over here right in between this letter Sometimes when you go for perfection, you go too far, and well, that's it, you ruin everything. Well, I can't get that off, we'll let that go. Over here, we did a, almost got 100% of the crud that was on the soundboard. Probably from somebody uh, 
eating their donut when they were coughing or something. It's got stuff in here. Particles. It's that one little piece right there. Should I go after it? Yes. Let it let the water. Okay, come on, come on, it's almost gone. One. Oh, it's almost there. Good enough. Good. There. We have it. Oh, it's very nice.